Sussex County Board of Trustees and Freeholders to order. Please rise for a moment of silence in memory of Jenny Schrader, mother-in-law of County Controller Al Kachinkas, Marine Corporal Kevin Reinhardt from Colonia, who was killed in Afghanistan, actor Robert Hedges from Touching and former Highland Park Mayor and Councilman Harold Berman. Thank you. Dennis, salute to the flag, please. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 10, has been complied with and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Volante. Here. Freeholder Delina. <coughs> Freeholder Polos. Here. Freeholder Tamaro. Here. Freeholder Valenti. Here. Freeholder Director Rafano. Freeholder Deputy Director Rios. Here. Each freeholder has been provided with a list of correspondence received by the clerk's office since our last meeting. This correspondence will be kept on file in the office of the clerk of the board for reference. Accept. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Freeholder reports. Freeholder Carol Barrett Belante. Thank you. The County of Middlesex proactively joined the newly formed Mid Jersey Energy Cooperation Cooperative Pricing System, which is MJECPS. And the that was effective August 4th, 2011. The county's uh, intended purpose was to add its energy requirements into a much larger en energy aggregation group and to leverage increased purchasing power to the end to save money. The MJECPS successfully completed its first reverse auction for natural gas on Thursday, January 26, 2012 which should result in natural gas cost savings estimated to be more than $50,000 for the first year of the three-year supply agreement. That's my report. Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholder H. James Paulus. Uh, thank you. Um, it's been a busy couple of weeks since our last meeting. I've had the opportunity in the last two weeks to meet with each of our uh, directors, department heads, and division heads and new area of public safety and health that I'm uh, chairing this year. I want to thank all of them for all the time and effort that they've put into sitting down with me and explaining their department, their operations, and their budgets. We've had one-hour meetings, we've had four-hour meetings, but they've all been extremely productive. We've laid out, I think, some plans and vision for what we hope to do during the course of the year, uh, looking at not only costs, but effective programs, ineffective programs, um, being able to actually have the vision of the individual division heads and directors and our, our public safety uh, director as well, uh, participating in the meetings to understand what exactly we intend to chart out for 2012, how we're going to fund it, uh, and how we're going to better serve the people of Middlesex County. So it's been extremely productive. Uh, a couple of items um, in the report. Our health department has scheduled a number of rabies clinics for the year. Calendars will be coming on, out on that very shortly. I also participated in a meeting uh, this past week. I'm a member of the Highway Traffic Safety Advisory Council for the state of New Jersey. They have uh, meetings uh, bi-monthly. And it was, there was a very interesting program that was presented by Somerset County Prosecutor's Office on distracted driving. I'm sure everyone will agree that uh, as you drive down the roads of any road, uh, in any county, uh, throughout New Jersey, or throughout any state, the concern of most drivers today uh, has been exceeded the drunken driving concern with distracted driving. People who are texting on the phone, uh, not looking where they're going, that's a big concern. The number of accidents and injuries have increased exponentially across the United States. It was a ex very interesting program that they developed in Somerset County. We're now looking at that to see if we can mirror something like that here in Middlesex County. We're working through our public safety channels to see if we can make that occur. We also had some very substantive meetings about our communications um, capabilities within Middlesex County and how we can uh, offer that opportunity to our municipalities, fire districts, EMS 
Uh, and that's been very exciting. We're making make some good progress with that in 2012, and I think we're going to chart out a plan that's going to be extremely beneficial to our municipalities. We also attended uh, last Sunday a meeting of all the volunteer and paid fire chiefs from Middlesex County. It was a quarterly meeting. Again, we had a good opportunity to discuss some of the program's ideas and uh, begin a dialogue with them about what they see uh, are their needs and how Middlesex County can help them accomplish their goals in their individual departments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholder Charles Tamaro. Thank you, Deputy Director. Uh, last month, the City of New Brunswick was recognized at the Downtown New Jersey Excellence Award reception with a Silver Streetscape Redevelopment Award for the improvements that were made to the George Street Streetscapes. The county awarded the City of New Brunswick with the Middlesex County Sustainable Energy Growth Improvement Fund Grant, which the city used to fund lighting project on George Street. We recently received a letter from Mayor Cahill and the office thanking the county for its financial support. The new Lumilock LED light post will enable New Brunswick to save more than 50% of their energy and maintenance costs on each pole and will eliminate the annual carbon emissions equivalent to 20 tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. I love 4-H spaghetti dinner. On February 26, 2012, Millsex County 4-H will host a spaghetti dinner from 4 to 8 p.m. at the County 4-H Center, 645 Cranberry Road in East Brunswick. Proceeds will go towards the much needed repairs of the Millsex County 4-H Center. Ticket prices for this event are $8 per person, which include dinner and dessert. There will also be a 50-50 and live entertainment. Space is limited, so be, sh be sure to reserve your seat. Built in 1988, the Middlesex County 4-H Center is a log cabin that serves as the headquarters to many 4-H youth and development clubs and programs. It is owned and maintained by the nonprofit Middlesex County 4-H Leaders Association. The youth center, center is self-supported through the hall rentals and fundraising events such as this. Not only not only is it the hub of activities during the Middlesex County Fair, but also the home to such programs as Exploration Week in the summer, 4-H Favorite Foods Festival, and the 4-H Open House during the fall and winter. If you would like more information on the Middlesex County 4-H, please contact the office at 732-398-5261. Middlesex County College, earlier this month, the County College began work on a new master plan. It is the responsibility of the college as well as the requirement of the, for the Middle States accreditation that Millsex County College engage in competing a comprehensive master plan. The plan will help the college administration and the board of trustees to understand the college's place in the community and includes an environmental scan of facilities, an audit, and a plan for technology and an, acad an academic plan. The master plan will be developed during the first half of this year in three phases, the first being the information gathering aspect of the plan. Uh, the Ag Agriculture and Resource Management Department received a competitive grant for $27,900 from the USDA and New Jersey Department of Agriculture to help promote local agriculture through, the P through PSAs and television and internet. Presenta presentations were given on January 4, 2012 to the Northeast Charter chapter of the American Society of Horticultural Science of our Bioenergy Research at the Middlesex County Earth Center. The research cons considers the practicality of growing native switchgrass switch, switch on parkland and, the, and marginal lands to improve the environment and reduce land management costs for our landowners. And I will close with uh, two words. Go Giants. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Director. Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholder Blanquita Valenti. Uh, thank you, Freeholder Director. Uh, <clears throat> mandated by HUD, the Department of Human Services uh, staff, and myself included, and of course, Tom Salheimer, our Executive Director, we, uh, we were involved in the point and count survey of the homeless in Middlesex County. This is mandated, as I said before, by the state. And um, it was an eye-opener. We visited uh, Elijah's Promise in New Brunswick, where some of the county was <coughs> being held, as well as in Perth Amboy, the Salvation Army, and the uh, Woodbridge Housing Authority. Um, it was a beautiful day, the weather was perfect, so there were a lot of people that came out 
and, and we're counted. We don't have a total yet of, of that, which is never really a, a uh, correct total since some people never come out. However, it is an indication of uh, how many homeless there are or people that are in danger of, of becoming homeless. And that's my report tonight. Thank you, Freeholder. <coughs> this time we will de deviate from regular, regular order of business, and I have a statement that I would like to read. Tonight I am proud to introduce the 2012 Middlesex County Operating Budget, which streamlines operations, slashes spending, and preserves our AAA bond rate. This budget represents a $1 million decrease in spending from 2011. Furthermore, it is a $2 million decrease in spending from 2010. The 2012 plan reflects a savings of more than $5 million in salary and operating expenses, which have helped us to offset increases in mandated expenses, such as mental health costs and medical services. This was achieved through the operational restructuring efforts, reducing the number of departments from 28 to 5. The budget we introduced tonight is $1.47 <coughs> million under the state mandated cap. With it, we will continue our tradition of offering the second lowest per capita cost of county government in the state. Further, to ensure that Middlesex County will retain its AAA bond rating, we are eliminating the reliance on surplus funds to balance the 2012 operating budget. We are one of only 67 counties out of the 3,140 in the nation that has a AAA rating. Underscoring our sound financial practices, we are proud of this achievement. We could not have done this alone. My freeholder colleagues and I work closely with the finance administration and administration and all department heads and office directors to complete a line item by line item review between September and December. In doing so, we trimmed more than $10.1 million in spending from what was originally requested in August when this budget process began. The 2012 budget proposal before you tonight also is the result of this board's commitment to finding new revenue sources and cutting all expenses under our control. Over the next year, we will begin to realize millions of dollars in energy savings as our solar projects at our Apple Orchard Lane Complex and the County College come online. We are already benefiting from our arrangement with Union County to explore shared health services because we are sharing the salary and benefits costs for our health officers. We are also continuing our commitment to retire debt. Before taking on new debt, lowering interest payments, and enabling us to complete needed infrastructure improvements so that our roads, bridges, and facilities remain in top condition. This 2012 operating budget proposal truly puts our residents first by providing quality service, services at a cost they can afford. It is the product of a freeholder board that is dedicated to cutting the size and cost of county government, to utilizing new technology, to increase productivity, and to fostering partnerships that deliver cost savings to <coughs> generate revenue to lessen the burden on our taxpayers. At this time, I would especially recognize CFO Al Kachinkas, Joe Peretti, and their staff who have worked tirelessly so we could put forth this solid proposal tonight. And I'd also like to recognize our administrator, John Palomino, who has worked closely with them. A public hearing on this plan is scheduled on February 23rd. We invite the public to comment or make suggestions on this plan between now and then, and of course that night. It is our intent to adopt the 2000 Middlesex, 2012 Middlesex County operating budget at our regular meeting on February 23rd. To summarize, this budget is $1 million less than the 2011 budget. It is under the state mandated cap by $1.47 million and it ensures that we retain our AAA bond rating. We are proud of these accomplishments. And I'd also like to recognize, unfortunately, Freeholder Director Rafano Sick, 
but he also worked very hard along with the rest of us that are here. With that, I ask our CFO, Al Kachinkas, to detail for us the budget we introduced tonight. <coughs> Thank you. What everybody has out in the <coughs> audience is uh, this package, which includes the operating budget and then there's the capital budget. And the Board of Freeholders on the dais has the official state budget, which is uh, more uh, detailed than, uh, than the, the, the uh, summaries. And this will be going to <coughs> down to the state uh, tomorrow morning, and uh, they'll be reviewing it, uh, and hopefully we'll have it ready for adoption on the 23rd. Now, summarized on the, well, first of all, let me say this. Uh, some of the things have been already said by the deputy director, but we, uh, we started the process of the, uh, when we sent out the budget package back on August the 23rd to all of the department heads, division heads, uh, office directors, and managers. Each was invited to review their request, which John Paul Mina, Joe Pruitty, myself, between September and January of this year. During these meetings, through friendly persuasion uh, <laughs> and through subsequent reviews by uh, Joe Pruitty and staff and myself, we were able to reduce the uh, request by $10,168,652. Now, uh, on January 17th, budget proofs were sent to all of the uh, to everybody with instructions on how to allocate the latest reductions that we have made. Now, we didn't get all the feedback yet from the departments, but there are uh, several departments out there that have to come back to us and say where the, the reductions are going to be uh, uh, allocated among the various line items within the budget. Uh, that we would like to have, well, uh, within the next week or so, but it must be uh, obtained before we have the public hearing. I'd like to recognize, though, Joe Fruitty, as uh, the deputy director has indicated, uh, who, who helped me or helped in, in doing this budget, along with uh, Sam, the boss, who sits in the front, and also Jennifer uh, Grodnowski. Uh, there's a lot of work that was done through the computer systems that we have to generate the, this package. And I have a really good staff in doing this. But anyway, if we go, if we go to the first page, uh, this summarizes the uh, gross budget down to the net levy. As uh, the uh, deputy director indicated, that we have a one million one hundred thousand dollar reduction in the gross budget, going from four uh, four hundred five million four hundred twenty two thousand last year to four hundred four million four hundred twenty one thousand this year. The total revenues uh, are this year is seventy-five million nine hundred fifty-five thousand. Uh, last year is sixty-three million nine hundred forty-seven thousand, an increase of uh, twelve million uh, eight thousand dollars. Now, as indicated by uh, the deputy director, there is no surplus being utilized, and we'll have an anal uh, we'll analyze that on Exhibit Five that's in this package. But last year we used three hundred three million six hundred ninety-four thousand. Now that comes down that our net levy for this year will be three hundred twenty-eight million four hundred sixty-six thousand. Uh, last year it was three million three hundred twenty million oh ninety-three. Uh, the uh, the maximum allowed by the levy. Now there are two ways of computing the levy, uh, the uh, the uh, the cap rather. The cap is in indicated on Exhibit Two and ex Exhibit Two A. And I'll go over those briefly with you. But we are under the cap by $1,468,997. Now, if we go to Exhibit 2, this is the what is known as the 1977 cap calculation. Uh, there, are, there are two, as I indicated, the 1977, which is on Exhibit 2, and the 2010, which is on 2A. And we must take use the one that's uh, uh, derives a lower levy, 
which is the 1977. So that means we've been using this thing for 35 years, this type of com computation. I've been here 44, so I, this is one that started 37, 35 years ago. But the, the way it's computed, uh, we're allowed to raise the levy no more than 329934997 And the Exhibit 2A reflects the 2010 uh, law, which is uh, $454,199 difference, uh, different than the uh, 1977 law. Now, uh, the revenue side, uh, the details of that are in Exhibit 3, which is the normal items of revenue that we anticipate every year, which is 765,000 uh, more than what it was last year. And Exhibit 4, which is the special items of revenue, and those are the revenue items that the Division of Local Government Services review uh, to make sure they're in accordance uh, with <coughs> good projections, which we do support with a uh, document that's about that thick with uh, uh, backup uh, for all that. And that's 57502000 uh, Last year was 43947 And the difference of it being grants, which we will probably, we will receive during the year. The state was a little lax in getting confirmations out for us this year. Uh, but uh, during the year bef before we close uh, the books, uh, we will get those confirmation. We will amend the budget. Now, if we turn to Exhibit 5, <clears throat> this is where we outline the, uh, the status of our surplus. And this is going to uh, hopefully uh, be applauded by the, uh, the uh, Standard & Poor's, our rating agency, because they're looking uh, for an increase in surplus, which we've, we've done here. The surplus, uh, last year we ended up with, after adopting the 2011 budget, we, we came up with 11,396,923. This year, we're gonna wind up with 18,084,247, or 6,687,324 uh, additional. And uh, the board uh, is uh, going to be, each year, uh, increasing, uh, hopefully increasing the amount being retained. Uh, we have a goal really to be uh, about $30 million, uh, but that's uh, to be seen whether we could do that over the next 10 or 12 years. But starting out, we had a balance of 11,396,923, what we ended up with in 2010, or 11, uh, 11. Uh, we had lapse appropriation balances, uh, and these were uh, 2011, and the million five that's shown here is the uh, unused appropriations in 2011. We had a, a, surp a surplus of uh, anticipated revenue over uh, uh, actual revenue over anticipated revenue of 558,982, which is just the opposite of what we had last year. We had a shortfall of two million eight hundred thousand dollars. Current year appropriations, we did, re, uh, we did cancel 111,360. We canceled prior year's accounts payable. Uh, this goes back to uh, the years uh, 2006 and seven, a uh, million nine hundred thousand. And we have miscellaneous revenue not anticipated of a million four seventy six two oh one, and that's made up of mainly made up of one, two, three, four, five items, uh, uh, about a million dollars. And added county taxes, even though the amount of added and omitted taxes was uh, 127,316 less in 2011 than it was in 2010, or 9.5% increase uh, decrease, the treasurer's office was able to get a million 144,661, which is only a balance of 65,998. So that's, and that was with phone calls made to the various. Uh, financial uh, uh, people in the uh, local uh, jurisdictions. So anyway, we're in good shape with surplus. Exhibit six outlines uh, those uh, OE appropriation, other expense appropriations that are over $25,000 increase. And just to briefly go over each of those, uh, I'll hit the better, the larger ones. 
the information technology, for instance, the, uh, is up uh, $273,655. And through uh, Khalid at, at, and June, we are uh, in investing in technology infrastructure, which will ultimately reduce the cost of overall cost of that department or the par departments over in the future. The Department of Real Estate, uh, the restructuring and consolidation efforts result in elimination of some leases and reduction in the utilities, and that's a reduction of 159968 Public property, uh, 41535 decrease, and that's a result of uh, consolidation efforts made uh, during the year. Group insurance, and everybody knows that the cost of insurance is going up, and this includes both the medical and, uh, and the prescription. There was a 5.1% increase, gross increase in that appropriation, but it was uh, offset somewhat with uh, the amount that we're de uh, deducting from employee salaries, and that amount is $1,960,000 that we, we will be deducting. Workers' comp is uh, increased by a million two, and this is based upon an actuarial recommendation uh, along with uh, current expenditure projections and the end of the year balance in their trust uh, accounts. Other insurance is decreased by a million seven fifty, and again, that's based upon actuarial recommendations and current expenditures and the end of the year trust balance, uh, the balances that we have. The uh, utilities are down by 50377 and that's, uh, that's due to the decrease, increase in efficiencies and a much warmer winter uh, that we're experiencing and hopefully will continue. The Board of Elections uh, and the next one, Elections County Clerk, as we know, is a, uh, is a presidential election year and because of that, uh, there is an increase for poll workers and uh, uh, advertising, et cetera. Highways and bridges, uh, uh, re reducing that by 388,352, and that's because we are increasing the motor vehicle, vehicle fines uh, with the red light uh, program that's in, in implemented in the last couple of years. Uh, we see an increase in fines, which we could utilize for the repair of roads. The Adult Correction Center is increased by 621,092, and that's because of the health care services that we render our uh, inmates, and that's a uh, three-year contract uh, with that, that increase. And the same way with the uh, juvenile detention center, uh, there was an increase in health care services and also food contract uh, that, that caused that increase. Home care for the elderly, uh, there was a re that's a re reduction of $100,308, and that was because of reorganization of that department. The uh, indigence in out-of-county uh, resident, uh, uh, out-of-county, out-of-county uh, hospitals. Uh, there's a move with the state to shift uh, inmates, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, patients from indigent patients from the state institution to various counties, and we must then pick up that cost that the uh, the counties incur. The Raritan Bay Mental Health Center, uh, there is a shift between the other expense category, which we're increasing, but there is this offsetting decrease in salaries and wages, and that's because of uh, the hiring, uh, engaging of consultants. Uh, the, the next three categories are state uh, mandated items, which uh, we received uh, invoices on uh, that we'll be paying during the year. The Department of Human Services, the increase in funding on that uh, is a commitment to the homelessness uh, and, uh, and it's offset by a decrease in aid to various social service agencies. The next item, uh, that's 60000 so there's a $3,000 uh, net reduction. Roosevelt Care Center, uh, there is a $300,000 increase. We're providing $7,500,000 this year. And it's a one-year adjustment for uh, IT enhancements that are being implemented in that uh, facility. Supplemental compensation at retirement. We were uh, swamped with retirements last year, and it depleted our reserves. And we are, we're getting more retirements as uh, people think things are going to change on the state level. So we have to uh, increase that uh, by $200,000 
uh, to make it a $500,000 appropriation. The Department of Transportation, uh, we had a reduction in a state grant of 188000 and we got Steve Fatante to uh, come up with a uh, an idea that we would have to only raise his department by 61795 Thank you, uh, Steve. Uh, the various grants, uh, as I said before, we will be amending our budget uh, during the year to uh, uh, to come back to uh, the grants when they are provided to us. Total debt service, uh, that is up $3,295,000. Uh, one of the reasons is the uh, first payment for the Roseville Care Center in Old Bridge. Uh, that's going to level off, and we predict that there will be a decrease in the debt service uh, in 2013, that next year. Uh, so that we'll look forward to that. The county, uh, the parks department, again, the motor vehicle fines uh, for the uh, roads uh, within the parks uh, are being used. So we are able to reduce that net uh, in various accounts by $106,705. The capital improvement fund is down to $925,000. That's, again, what the Freeler uh, de deputy director indicated. We're uh, reducing the, the need for capital uh, funds. We are going to be reappropriating a lot of funds during the year, and then we'll be in contact with each department to, uh, to get uh, their your okay for those reappropriations. Now, that will take uh, bond council uh, services uh, to do that. Prior's bills, that's, uh, uh, these, these are bills that are due uh, other county institutions for the patients in. Uh, indigent patient and state institutions. Again, this is what I said before, that the state is changing the policy of uh, putting those uh, patients in various county institutions. Uh, the public employees retirement system, it's, this is not bad, only $98,000. Last year was several hundred thousand dollars, or I think it was about $300,000 increase last year. The OSA, OASI, FICA, is a reduction, and that's because we we have uh, reserves that we're using, uh, and the the we had a slight over uh, provision last year, so we're, we're able to cut this this year. The county uh, detective pension fund that was a, 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 a fund with only one individual in it at this, and that person passed away. And the last item, the police and fire. This was a real uh, good gift to the county. It's a million nine hundred ninety-three thousand five fifty-eight decrease, and that was a state building to us. So that covers uh, all the big items. And we covered everything uh, but sixty thousand dollars on this one piece of paper. And then behind this uh, exhibit seven is the each department that's uh, in our budget. I'm not going to go through all that. So, uh, does the board have any questions? Any of you have any questions about? No. Thank you, Al. Oh, I forgot. We got a capital. <laughs> I know you want to get rid of me, but that's okay. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, capital uh, is a total of million, uh, $47,336,000. That includes the school, uh, the vocational school, college, and the uh, the use of MCIA funding. Uh, the MCIA funding is eight million two hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars. But uh, without going over, you could take a look at this, and uh, hopefully the departments uh, are in agreement. But we do have plans, uh, as I said before, to reappropriate funds, and we'll be in contact. And uh, Joe Peritti tells me he knows of $33 million. Now, Joe, it's pretty hard to believe that we have that much money <laughs> that we could reappropriate. Well, we'll see. But this, this program includes uh, five major departments that has $33 million in here uh, being requested. And that's the Adult Correction Center, the Engineering Department, the Parks, and the Highways and Bridges. And that's it. Thank you very much, Al. Okay. This time, the clerk will read the resolution relative to the establishment of the CAP Bank for 2012 year. 
Authorize increase in the 2012 tax levy cap limits and establishment of a cap bank, NJSA 40A colon 4-45.14. Authorize public hearing to be held on February 23, 2012 at 7 p.m. in the freeholders meeting room. Whereas the local government cap law, NJSA 40A colon 4-45.1 at SEC provides that in preparation of its annual budget, a county shall limit any increase in its levy in said budget to 2.5% unless authorized by resolution to increase it to 3.5% over the previous year's tax levy, subject to certain exceptions. And whereas NJSA 40A colon 45.15A provides that a county may, when authorized by resolution, establish and when and if necessary, utilize a cap bank for the allowable increase from the 2.5% cap limit to the 3.5% percent percentage rate within the current year or in either of the next two succeeding years, and whereas the County of Middlesex finds it advisable and prudent to increase the calendar year 2012 tax levy cap by up to 3.5% over the previous years in the interest of promoting the health, safety, and welfare of its citizens. And whereas the Board of Chosen Freeholders hereby determines that a 1% increase in the tax levy cap bank for said year amounting to $2,075,823 in excess of the increase in the tax levy cap bank otherwise permitted by the local government cap law is advisable and prudent. And whereas the Board of Chosen Freeholders hereby determines that any amount authorized here and above that is not utilized as part of the final budget tax levy shall be retained as an exception to the final tax levy cap in either of the next two succeeding years. And whereas NJSA 48 colon 4-45.14 requires that a public hearing be held thereon, and whereas this board wishes to hold said public hearing on Thursday, February 23rd, 2012 at 7 p.m. in the Freeholders Meeting Room, County Administration Building, New Brunswick, now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Middlesex a majority of the full authorized membership of this governing body affirmatively concurring that in the calendar year 2012 budget year, the final allowable tax levy cap of the County of Middlesex shall, in accordance with this resolution and NJSA 40A colon 4-45.14, be increased by 1% amounting to $2,075,823 and that calendar year 2012 county budget for the County of Middlesex be approved and adopted in accordance with this resolution and be it further resolved that any amount authorized here and above that is not utilized as part of the final budget levy shall be retained as an exception to the final tax levy cap in either of the next two succeeding years and be it further resolved that a public hearing shall be held on Thursday, February 23rd, 2012 at 7 p.m. in the Freeholders Meeting Room, County Administration Building, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Be it further resolved that the clerk of this board shall cause this resolution to be published in the Home News Tribune, East Brunswick, at least 10 days prior to the date of said public hearing. Be it further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution, as introduced, be filed with the director of the Division of Local Government Services within five days of introduction. Be it further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution upon adoption with the recorded vote included thereon be filed with said director within five days after such adoption. Thank you. At this time, uh, I'll open it up to the public for any comments on this resolution only. Here are no public comment. I move to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Consideration of resolution number 12-0272 only. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Volante? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Deputy Director Rios? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, there's, I'm sorry. I, there's more I have to read. Sorry. Annual budget. This is the county budget notice. Annual budget of the County of Middlesex for fiscal year 2012. Be it resolved that the following statements of revenues and appropriations shall constitute the county budget for the year 2012. Be it further resolved that a summary of said budget be published in the Home News Tribune in the issue of February 10, 2012. The Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Middlesex does hereby approve the following as the budget for the year 2012. 
Summary of approved budget. Total of general appropriations for 2012, $404,421,000. Less anticipated revenues, $75,955,000. Amount to be raised by taxation, county purpose tax, $328,466,000. Is there a motion to introduce the budget? So, um, second. Roll call. I'm oh, sorry, is there any discussion by any freeholders? No comments? Roll call, please. Freeholder Barrett Belante? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamara? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Deputy <coughs> Director Rios? Yes. Notice is hereby given that the budget and tax <coughs> resolution was approved by the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Middlesex on February 2nd, 2012. A hearing on the budget and tax resolution will be held at the County Administration Building, New Brunswick, New Jersey, on February 23rd, 2012 at 7 p.m., at which time and place objections to said budget and tax resolution for the year 2012 may be presented by taxpayers or other interested persons. Thank you. At this time, uh, is there a motion to resume the regular order of business? Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Kelso, are there any resolutions to be added? There are none. Any resolutions to be amended? There are none. Resolutions to be held? There are none. Resolutions to be voted? There are also none. Okay, uh, at this time I open a meeting to the public for any discussion on any resolutions listed on the agenda only. Motion to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, are there any items to be moved from the consent agenda and voted on separately? Okay. Uh, all resolutions affecting the 2012 budget are subject to the adoption thereof. A motion to adopt the consent agenda, Mr. Kelso. Yes, at this time, uh, Deputy Director, a motion would be in order to adopt the consent agenda consisting of resolution numbers 12-0213 through 12-0212, excluding resolution 12-0212, which was previously voted upon. Motion to adopt the consent agenda. Second. Excuse me, it's 272. Is that what I said? No. 212. Oh, I'm sorry, 0272. We'll have to print this larger next time. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> bigger paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Roll call. Roll call, please. <coughs> Freeholder Baraponte? Yes. Freeholder Polo? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Deputy <coughs> Director Rio? Yes. Okay. At this time, I open the meeting to the public on any, dis any matters. Anyone from the public that has any comments? Yes, ma'am. Please come up to the mic. State your name. My name is Pat Kay. I'm a resident of Middlesex County since 1962 and a resident of South Brunswick for the past 16 years. Uh, in the year 2000, I became legally blind. Uh, I have to say that it was quite a shock. I was a practicing freelance artist at the time, so it was quite an adjustment to make. I, uh, one of the biggest helps to me in adjusting to being blind was the uh, array of Middlesex County organizations of blind people. They are not all self-help groups, but in joining these groups, some of them, I don't belong to all of them, they, um, they have helped me enormously learn to live with my blindness and continue to be active in, in public affairs, in, um, in my personal life, in uh, trying to improve transportation for South Brunswick. 
Uh, I, these uh, organizations, it was possible for me to go to these organizations because MCAT has special trips services that take blind people to the meetings of the organizations. Now I'm talking about about seven or eight organizations. They all have different purposes, different times of meeting and so forth. But one of the common things among all of them is that the MCAT special trips manage to transport the blind people of Middlesex County to these meetings. And I cannot tell you how valuable they have been to me. It is my understanding that if there is not an additional pot of money found somewhere to support these special trips, there will be no special trips next year. Now you're talking tonight in introducing this budget of, of a, you talk in millions, I'm not talking about millions of dollars, but I'm talking about a small pot of money that needs to be set aside so that these organizations themselves do not disappear. They, these organizations, I have a list of them here for you and the number of people who have transportation to uh, get transportation from MCAT to the meetings. Uh, and I have the names and contact information for the presidents of all of these organizations. Uh, two of the presidents are here tonight. More would be here, but ironically, we do not have transportation to get places. Um, tonight, several of the people who are here have gone to great expense to get here. And I'm here because my son has taken the evening to, to get me here and to get me home. Um, some of the, the, these organizations that I'm talking about are not frivolous. One of them is the Friends of the New Jersey State Library for the Blind. Um, it is now, uh, the State Library for the Blind is now called the Talking Book and Braille Center. But the, the Organization of Friends is an organization that is devoted to uh, supporting that library, for raising money for that library, and doing what we can to support the library. One of the organizations is the National Federation of the Blind. Now, the National Federation of the Blind is not going to go out of business if we don't have special trips. But Middlesex County will have no voice in the National Federation of the Blind. Miss, if I may, may interrupt you, in this budget, we are funding that. That is not going to be cut. You're not cutting special trips? Steve Fatante, our transportation director here, can verify that as well. Uh, am I correct? The additional Then, then we made the trip unnecessarily, but I thank you for <laughs> listening. Thank you for coming. I'm very glad to thank hear you. it. <laughs> Anyone else? You did an it? excellent job explaining it, anyhow. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Teresa Finney. I was going to second what she said about the MCAT Transportation Service, I2. Uh, utilize that service. Uh, just recently I did. Um, it is a very, very useful service. I, I too was deemed um, disabled in 2002. Um, I'm glad uh, Mr. Fontante is here this evening. Um, there, I've only utilized the program per maybe three or four times uh, within the last three years. However, they changed their policy. It's a little inconveniencing now to um, request that individuals mail in funds to receive tickets in the mail 
to have their transportation arranged. That's a little inconveniencing. I live amongst seniors at this time and other disabled individuals. The process is a little, although we have um, advance notice for our appointments, the procedure in receiving tickets to uh, secure or confirm that ride is a little inconveniencing, in my opinion. Um, I thought that I had missed my appointment and I didn't send the payment, so I went to the post office and I arranged with another young man to pay on the bus with the money order that I t obtained from the, library, um, from the post office. So it's a little, for seniors who um, aren't writing checks or having to make a second, tr uh, extra trip to get a money order, which may go up because the post office is increasing often with their fees, it's, um, it's inconveniencing. Also, um, I haven't had a chance to look over the whole budget. I want to say and compliment you guys. Middlesex County is a very high-end town. Um, you're doing a superb job of what you have. It, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that there are so many people that are needy. Um, I started working at 11 years old, and I had a very strong work, work ethic, and I still do. Uh, I would prefer to work alone or um, work for myself, um, and I'm positioning myself at this time to uh, try to get bids with the city. I've already, already introduced myself to the reserve, uh, the treasury, um, to work for uh, the county. So, but I wanted to say that you guys are doing a very good job and I've, I'm born and raised in New Brunswick. I, I've always loved the city. Um, I've traveled out of the city and came back, um, but you are doing a very good job, but I just wish that some of the services could be a little more efficient um, in, in, in executing getting the services. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Yes, sir. Director, I was yes. mentioning to the administrator, if I just may, having done the transportation for a number of years, I think that it's important for those of you who made the trip here tonight to understand that, and I know all the freeholders feel this way, that the county's always been committed to providing the most maximum opportunities for transportation. Uh, in fact, we've grown our transportation system within the county to facilitate your attendance at meetings, uh, your ability to be able to get to medical appointments, social interaction, religious opportunities. We transport over half a million people a year with some 75 or so buses. Uh, and it's, it's an extremely daunting task, but recognize one thing that each year the state aid that we receive continues to be reduced. And the largest part of the transportation budget comes from state and federal grant dollars. Uh, the, one of the most significant elements of that is what is generated in Atlantic City and everybody understands how those revenues have been declining over the last couple of years. So it's unfortunate that that becomes the mainstay for the transportation system within the county. Uh, and when those dollars are siphoned off or reduced by the state or federal government, it takes people like Steve and, and John and the director and, and now the new chairperson under uh, Freelder Valenti to try to find creative ways to continue to provide the service. And it was done this year, and that's because there's a commitment to continue to provide it. But it certainly isn't an easy task. So I just wanted to put things in context for everyone that um, it is a difficult process each year, and each year it gets more and more difficult to do. But thankfully, we've been able to accomplish it again in 2012. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is uh, Bob Von Toon. I'm from South Brunswick Township. I'm here representing the Board of Agriculture of Moses County tonight. We would just like to extend our uh, sincere thanks um, for your continued support for um, agriculture and the Cooperative Extension Service and um, that great facility that we have out there at the Davis Mill Pond Park. That's um, something I think the county should be really proud of. They got a lot of great programs going on out there. Um, they're doing research uh, <coughs> plots. They've got variety of trials going on. They've got the uh, perennial and flower gardens going on with the master gardeners. They're doing a lot of great work with the 4-Hers out there. Been to several of their open houses. They get quite a few county residents coming out for their programs, uh, educating them about agriculture and all the other programs they got going on out there. So um, we would just uh, like to thank you for your continued support of agriculture. And um, with your support, agriculture will stay strong in the county. I'm not sure if you're uh, aware that um, Several of our farmers uh, this year have received some pretty nice uh, awards. Um, John Hauser from Old Bridge has received the Fruit Grower of the Year Award. Jim Jim Maurice in East Brunswick has received the Vegetable Grower of the Year Award. Bill Griffin from South Brunswick has received the Distinguished Service to Agriculture Award from the State Board of Agriculture a couple weeks ago at the State Ag Convention. 
And in a couple of weeks, um, Roy Etch from Monroe is going to receive the Distinguished Service, and uh, I'm sorry, the Gold Medallion Award for Service to Agriculture from the New Jersey Ag Society. Oh, so there are four good. very prestigious awards that uh, our county should be very proud of. Thank, Thank you. you. We are very proud of, uh, and we are very supportive through the years. Freeholder, uh, former Freeholder Director uh, Cravel has always been supportive yes. of open space, farmland, and it's really <coughs> enjoyable to see all of you cooperate and maintain and keep Middlesex County on the map as far as farmland. So we, we really appreciate your support as well. Okay, thank you. South Brunswick's proud of that wonderful farm. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> Anyone else from the public? Is there a motion to close? Move to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.